the gentleman from Illinois, Mr. Krishnamurthy, is now recognized. Director Ray, when we last spoke on April 15th at a House Intelligence Committee hearing, you testified the fo as to the following, quote, I think there have been some instances where you have non-state actors who have offered different kinds of support to domestic violent extremists here in this country. You continue to believe that, right, Mr. Ray? Uh, yes, my testimony from the, our prior exchange uh, remains the same. Yes, sir. And the FBI has been investigating this issue of the foreign funding of domestic violent extremists, correct? Uh, well, foreign funding, um, certainly, certainly different kinds of interaction. I'm not sure that I could specify funding sitting here right now, but we are very focused on the interplay between different types of, as you said, non-state actors overseas and domestic terrorists here in the United States. On January 14th, Yahoo News highlighted a report on the issue of DVE funding from a company called Chainalysis. According to this report, one month before January 6th, a French donor, quote, lamenting the decline of Western civilization, close quote, sent approximately a quarter million dollars in Bitcoin to an indiv individual named Nick Fuentes. Why Nick Fuentes? Nick Fuentes, who's been suspended from YouTube for hate speech, is a self-proclaimed leader of the group Groypers, a white supremacist group opposed to immigration and minorities. The Anti-Defamation -Def League confirmed that many of Groypers' members were at the Capitol on January 6th, including Nick Fuentes himself. Here's a picture of Mr. Fuentes from his Twitter account on that day. The circle is around Mr. Fuentes himself. ProPublica documents that members of Groypers breached the Capitol that day as well. Mr. Ray, here's what we know. A foreign actor sent a quarter million dollars in Bitcoin to the leader, Nick Fuentes, of a far-right extremist group, Groypers, in the lead-up to January 6th. We also know from NBC News from January 16th reporting that the FBI is investigating this particular transaction involving Nick Fuentes. Sir, you can't rule out that other far-right extremist groups receive foreign donations in the lead-up to January 6th, can you? Uh, not only would I not want to rule it out, but certainly the possibility of foreign funding or support for domestic violent extremism is something that's particularly high on our priority list because of the challenges it poses. You and you can't, you can't rule so out... Part of the concern. Yes, sir. You can't rule out that foreign financing helped fund activities related to January 6th, right? Uh, correct. I'm not sure we've seen that at this stage, but I certainly wouldn't purport to have ruled it out. Okay. That's very disturbing that foreign uh, actors may have helped fund activities connected to the January 6th insurrection. Uh, I want to turn your attention to another topic. Director Ray, you became the FBI director in 2017, right? In uh, August of 2017. We recently learned from Al Apple Corporation that in early 2018, the company received a subpoena, including a, fe a federal gag order, requesting electronic metadata related to House Intelligence Committee members, staffers, and family members. This is in connection with a, D, a DOJ leak investigation. You've heard about this investigation and these subpoenas, correct? I, I've been reading about them in the press, yes. Well, CNN reports, quote, the leak hunt began when the FBI sent a subpoena to Apple in February 2018. You don't dispute that report, correct? Uh, I really can't discuss a specific investigation. Uh, I really don't want to get out in front of the Justice Department on this. You know, and decisions about subpoenas are really best directed towards And the them. FBI interviewed witnesses in connection with this leak investigation, correct? Uh, again, sir, I, I really can't discuss any specific investigation. I'm not asking you to discuss, discuss any specifics of the investigation, but the FBI was involved with these investigations, correct? When there are leak investigations, uh, typically the FBI is the investigative agency. That's Good. That's, that, the, really that's what we thought. The FBI was involved with this investigation. Now, sir, and this is during the time that you are the FBI director, did you ever discuss the Apple subpoenas with Jeff Sessions? 
Uh, Congressman, I understand the question. I really don't want to get out of the Justice Department on this. As you know, the Attorney Sir, General... Sir, you're just being asked a simple a yes or no question. Did you discuss the leak investigation with Jeff Sessions? Uh, Congressman, again, respectfully, I'm not trying to be difficult here, but the Inspector General has been asked to look into this. I have a very good work Sir, you're being evasive. The These are yes or no General. questions, sir. You're under oath. These are yes or no simple questions that we need to get to the bottom of. Sir, serving these secret subpoenas um, to collect records on members of Congress is something we'd expect in Putin's Russia, not the United States. And sir, your involvement needs to be probed just like everyone else's. Thank you. Time has expired. In the FBI's view, the top domestic violent extremist threat comes from racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists, specifically those who advocated for the superiority of the white race. That is an absolute flat out lie. It is not our greatest threat. Not once in his speech today did Merrick Garland mention last summer's BLM riots or skyrocketing crime on our streets, the riots we still see week in and week out. How about Merrick Garland? You condemn this man on your screen, Justin Tyran Roberts, arrested for shooting five people in a 20 hour shooting spree in Georgia over the weekend. You know why he did it, according to investigators? They insist he was intentionally targeting white, military-looking men. That sounds racially motivated to me. He didn't mention that. No mention of this black-on-white crime because it doesn't fit their divisive narrative. These are stories that are actually happening in America. How about we stop issuing fake warnings about crime based off of political agendas and start prosecuting all criminals no matter what color they are. When you're up there, are you just getting tired of being told you're a racist, I'm a racist, everybody watching is a racist? Yeah. They have to talk about January 6th, and they have to talk about things that divide us on, uh, along racial grounds. It is, it is so wrong, but that's who the Democrats are today. They're this radical left-wing party, and they have nothing else positive to talk about, so they have to go here. You know, you look at January 6th, everybody has said it was a tragic day, it never should have yep. happened, they wanted people that were violent and destructive put away. But, you know, I was looking at Senator Ron Johnson, he looked at hours and hours and hours of tapes, and he was like something like 40% of the people were just let in by Capitol Police. But they don't talk about any of that, and you have SWAT teams showing up in California at somebody's house trying to rouse them out of the house for walking around taking selfies inside that Capitol. It isn't right, Congressman. Or how about the couple in Alaska who weren't even in the Capitol? I mean, look, you're right. We Republicans have been, conservatives have been consistent. We condemned the violence that took place on January 6th, and we condemned all of it that took place all last summer with all these, uh, in all these metropolitan areas around our, around our great country. The Democrats are the ones who have been hip hypocrites on this. They did, they, last summer was fine. That was a righteous cause. But then they focused on, on January 6th. But the couple in Alaska who weren't even in the Capitol, the FBI kicks in their door, holds them at gunpoint, handcuffs them, interrogates them for four hours. They got the wrong couple. And then they take their phones, their laptop, and their pocket-sized copy of the Constitution. Talk about, I mean, th th there's got to be irony in that, that, that fact alone. So, yeah, th where's the consistency that we would like from everyone? We've been consistent. I wish the Democrats would do the same. Yeah. Well, there's my pocket constitution. I carry it with me all over the place. <laughs> and I'm in Texas, Congressman. Come and take it. Usually we're talking about guns. This time I'm talking about my constitution. In the FBI's view, the top domestic violent extremist threat comes from racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists, specifically those who advocated for the superiority of the white race. Garland did not provide any numbers or statistics to back up this claim, but pointed to past racially motivated shootings and attacks, as well as the January 6th riot on Capitol Hill. Noticeably, Garland spent his entire 26-minute speech without even mentioning the summer of riots one time, simply ignoring months of attacks on police and federal buildings and cities all across this country as if it just didn't happen. Steve, I think this shows how politicized Biden's DOJ has really become ignoring vi radical violent groups like Antifa, like BLM, simply because they support the left-wing agenda. Yeah, unfortunately, it's another example of two sets of rules or two sets of narratives, really, in a way. And the narrative being spread here, of course, is that that January 6th 
is, uh, was a, a riot that somehow endangered the American Republic, which is not in any sense true. It was an unarmed riot, inexcusable for, to be sure, but unarmed. No, not one person has been charged with having a firearm inside the Capitol that day, and it lasted a few hours. To try to compare that to weeks of rage and carnage up, across the summer last year in 2020 um, is just totally ludicrous and illogical. Unfortunately, that's right where Merrick Garland went. They're essentially pitting Americans against one another by labeling it ba via basically a race war, which is essentially what they're implying with that statement. And I don't agree with it. And I think it's absolutely horrifying to see that you have the DOG, DOJ essentially being weaponized against the American people. There was, a, there was a rally in Chicago of white supremacists on January 25th. And they put out a national call and they got 80 people to show up in Chicago. And according to one expert, five people were from the Chicago area. Out of about, what, eight or nine million people who live in Chicago, there were five people, right? And so a lot of this uh, the southern, the, relies on the Southern Poverty Law Center and the statistics that they put out and the media regurgitate that. And so I think we have to be careful. Certainly, I, I do not trust the media uh, on this issue because they, they have proven themselves to be uh, you know, not reliable when it comes to being partisan and pushing certain narratives. So um, is white supremacy, is, is there some in the United States? Absolutely. Is it the most, uh, biggest threat to, to America? I think that's overblown. And I think that the administration is pushing it for their own political reasons. You know, it seems to me that race relations in America in recent decades have improved so dramatically that things like, for example, interracial marriages are totally unremarkable in America today. Uh, and it is not considered acceptable in polite society at all to have racist views. And yet we have people like Garland and Joe Biden who want to insist that the country is systemically racist. Are they essentially protesting a struggle that has already been won in American culture? You know, there has been tremendous progress in this country. And, and for a lot of folks uh, on the left to, to, as they're saying now, this is, you know, voting rights, it's Jim Crow 2.0, that there's been no progress made since the 1960s or even the 1860s. I mean, that is, most Americans understand that's ludicrous. I mean, that is gaslighting, right? That is an absolute gaslighting right. of the American people. And so I think, uh, again, in our normal everyday lives, we do not see the bogeymen that are being made out. There are not Klansmen walking around the corner. There are not white supremacists uh, gathering on street corners. And so I think, uh, you know, that ultimately falls flat to the American people because that's not what we see and we live in our day to day lives. Right. And we understand that racism is really, uh, you know, has has been a thing of the past. I mean, does it still exist today? Sure, it does in certain areas. But is the is the country systemically racist and oppressive? I don't think most people believe that.